Like goats, worms can be a gardener's best friend. Oftentimes you see worm farming or vermiculture to be expensive and complicated. Well, when you study about worms and look at them closely, they don't need air conditioned rooms, they don't need a roof, they don't need a box. Worms are everywhere. There are worms here, there are worms there, there are worms there, there are worms everywhere. The question is, how do you keep them together? Today, I'm going to teach you about worm farming, the simple kind. My name is Sal Cariaga, and this is The Green Project. This is Salvador Cariaga. This is The Green Project. Still grow your own food. Yum, 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 yum. The beauty about living in a forest by yourself If you search vermiculture on the internet, it is the process of using worms to decompose organic food waste. The worms eat organic food waste and then secrete vermicast that will fertilize the soil, thus turning the waste into a nutrient-rich material capable of supplying necessary nutrients to help sustain plant growth. They also provide protein-rich feeds for the chicken, fish, and livestock. This method is simple effective, convenient, and noiseless. It saves water, energy, landfills, and helps rebuild the soil. Worms in Cebu cost as much as 500 pesos. In Manila, 800 to 1,000 pesos. Worm casting costs between 10 to 20 pesos. I've heard worm casting costing 30 pesos. Today, we're going to find worms free. This part here don't have much worms, but I can see they're cast in it. Meaning to say that this is good, rich, organic fertilizer. You can consider this as worm compost, and you need as much of that in your garden as possible. Worms need a little moisture and they need food. If it's too hot, worms will die or escape. If it's too wet, they get drowned and die or escape. So they need a good balance of good moisture and good food. If there's food, there's moisture, they stay there. This is a fairly new compost. It's still hot and they're still alive. We'll wait for a few more months. After a few months, this turns dark and this will be swarming with worms. I'll take you to a next place where there's a lot of worms. This is right next to someone's house. As you can see, there's some water coming out. This should be teeming with worms. Let's see. Ah -ha! Worms! 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 Lots of worms. 
if we start digging this, we should get several kilos of worms all around. Let's keep looking. Worms. 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 More worms. Worms. Worms are 70% protein. Yum, 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 yum. The chicken like them, the fish like them. And if you don't know them, I'll put them in your soup. You will like them too. This part here, again, as you can see, are newly placed. By the time this turn black and more water is being poured underneath there on a daily basis, this will be full of worms. Kilos and kilos of worms. I would say as many as 10 kilos just, just around this. That's a lot of money. We're raising African night crawlers. They are domesticated worms, if you want to say it that way. And they're very easy to grow. They won't bite you, they won't harm you. And what worms do is they aerate the soil. If you have worms in your garden, then you're lucky because other than aerating the soil, they leave behind casts that become fertilizers for your garden. Without worms, it's hard to do organic farming. Worms are gardeners' best friend. Now we're hunt for more worms, African night crawlers. African night crawlers are surface worms. They stay within a foot, more or less, under the ground. They go up and then they poop and then they come back down again and keep eating and eating and eating. And these are African night crawlers. They're farmers' best friends. We cover it with coconut leaves so that the chicken who loves worms will not eat all our earthworms. This is a new compost. We put our garbage here, our kitchen scraps. And we also placed a few worms. The worms will speed up the decomposition process so that we will have compost, vermicompost, a whole lot faster. Vermiculture is the art of raising worms. We're going to teach you a system and a method that doesn't cost anything. This one looks like a dump, and it is. It's a bunch of compost, garbage, put together a few months ago. Today, this one is teeming with worms underneath it. Let's find out. Mm. There are worms in this pile. In a few more months, this place really will be full of worms. Worm farming doesn't have to be complicated, doesn't have to be expensive. Two things we have to remember, they like to have some moisture and they want to have food. Not too hot and not too wet. And you will have worms crawling all over your compost. Worm farming is important part of organic gardening. Nato ni siya, unya matagkaroon ng unya bisbis lang o bisbis. Unya mo mudagha ni kagud ni siya o mga wati.
So kini siya di rip, ilinya ni siya ngun ana, padung dia. Tanan ni siya. Let's say, let's just wait for a year. And then after a year, you know, mag dumugo na ni siya o gwati. Now we're doing the final planting of our upside down tomato hanging plants. Down here you see the upside down and now we're putting some tomato at the top using the materials that are from our compost. There you go. What I demonstrated for you is the practical and economical way to make vermicast that would take almost or exactly a year. Now we go to a commercial farm that makes the same product with less amount of time. This is one of the largest vermiculture farms in Caraga region. It is owned by Mrs. Nelly Arangali. By herself, she built this into a formidable and impressive farm. Later on, it was copied by other farmers and made even bigger ones out of the inspiration that she started. This vermi farm has received a lot of orders. Recently, over 300 bags were ordered for them to produce. Mrs. Nelly can barely supply the orders. There's a huge market in vermiculture. Vermis, as you have learned, produce rich quality organic fertilizer and can also be used as repellent among many other things. And I'm going to show you the materials that Nelly is using to feed her worms. The feeds you feed the worms are almost free. Doesn't cost anything, just sweat equity. These are banana pops shredded so the worms can eat them, absorb them and produce rich, healthy, Burmese cast. Other feeds for the worms are leaves, but not just any kind of leaves. These leaves are leguminous, madre cacao, madre de agua, and other healthy leaves. The worms take them, digest them, and secrete even richer organic fertilizer for your gardens. These are rice stalks. Worms love these stalks. They are dried, watered, and then rotten. Microbes have been spread all over this to speed up the decomposition process. And then this is shared and fed to the worms. They, ate, they eat them and it helps them grow and secrete, again, rich organic fertilizer. These are animal manure, cow manure, water buffalo manure, goat manure. Worms love manure. It gives them a healthy diet. This, the grass, the banana stalks, and other things gives the worm complete diet that will keep them healthy producing a lot of vermicast. This is a fresh mixture of vermi food. Yum, 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 yum. There's all kinds of food here. Nutritious worms love this. When this is watered regularly, worms will migrate here from one end where they are right now located. Follow me and I'll show you what happens after a few months of eating these feeds. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Worms, 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 worms. These are 70% protein. 
Yum, 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 yum. The chicken like them, the fish like them, and if you don't know anything about it, you'll like them too. This is the worm separator, designed by Nelly's husband, an engineer who works overseas. We will put the worms inside the soil separator. The soil separator has nets so that the worms will not be injured in the process of separating the worms, the worm cast, and the bigger solid. We turn over the separator slowly and you can see the vermicast being separated, being strained and the worms are gradually moving to the end of the bin. The worms turn up a little bit dizzy from all those turning and twisting around, but they're still okay. Okay. And here you have rich vermicast, dark black gold. So these are then manually separated and these are sold at 500 pesos per kilo. In Cebu, we sell them at almost 800 to 1,000 and Manila goes even a lot higher. This goes to show that there's money in these worms. There's money in farming and there's future in this livelihood. Working with worms is a win-win solution to slum pollution. Even human waste can be disposed of properly, composted, and cleaned up by worms free of bacteria and diseases. Worms can turn swampy slums into clean and green. There's no unfertile soil with a fertile mind. Whether you live in tiny Camilla home village or in slum areas, you can still grow your own food against the wall or hang it like this or on rooftops or anywhere where you can find space. We hope you enjoy our program today on vermiculture. This is Salvador Cariaga and this is The Green Project. Join us next time.